والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم. Okay, we had Sister Isia from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia call, and she asked about uh, making du'a. She says that sometimes we ask our friends, uh, please make du'a for us. She says, what's the difference between this and asking somebody who's a friend of Allah, wali Allah, whether alive or dead, because we can discuss this here, uh, to make du'a <coughs> for us? What's the difference here? There is all the difference in the world, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to life or dead, mm -hmm. because we're not supposed to ask from the dead. The dead are more in need for us than anybody else, <laughs> are in need for our prayers. And and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once knew that Umar ibn al-Khattab was going to perform Umrah, so he asked him to pray for him. Mm -hmm. Umar prayed to the, for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is permissible to ask righteous people, or even ordinary people, and especially your parents, and youngers, to pray for you. That is permissible, and it is recommended. And it is recommended to ask for more righteous people. Pray for me. Their dua is most likely to be answered. And not only that, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us to pray for one another in the unseen. And he said, the dua which is most likely to be accepted is a dua bi dhahr al ghaib which means that when you pray for somebody who is not present. So, I was performing Umrah for innocence and I say, Oh Allah bless Jameel, Oh Allah bless everybody in Huda TV, Oh Allah bless the Ummah, Oh Allah liberate Jerusalem, Oh Allah, Oh Allah give victory to the Muslim Ummah. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when somebody prays for somebody else in his absence, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints an angel, mm -hmm. appoints an angel, who stands next to you to say, Oh Allah respond, Ameen, Ameen. That's it? No. And give him similar to what he asked for that person. So when you say, Oh Allah, make somebody rich, or give him shifa or cure, or let this girl get married, or have children, the angel says, Oh Allah, respond and give him, which is you, the supplicant, similar to what you have asked for your brothers or for your sisters. But asking from the dead is an act of shirk, is an act of associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot avail you on art. They do not own anything for themselves, let alone others. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the greatest human being ever, life or dead, and we don't ask from him. Because he himself said to his nephew, Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, Ya Ghulam, if you ever ask, then you should only ask from Allah. If you ever seek help, you should only seek the help of Allah. إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله It does not make any sense when somebody says, Oh Mullah so and so, help me. Oh Peer so and so, oh, or even Prophet. Because by that you're sitting partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for your information, the Quran spoke about this kind of associating others with Allah in details. He said that the Meccan pagans argued with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they said, we worship one God. He said, what about these idols? They argued saying, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ in اللَّهِ زُلْفَى we're only taking them as means of approach to take us directly to Allah because we're not pure enough. They were righteous. And this is how Satan deceived humanity and mankind. When first righteous people died, so he said, you're not going to commemorate the remembrance? Why don't you draw pictures and make statues of them? So they did. Then after the flood of uh, Nuh, he inspired somebody to dig them out. Amr ibn Ruhay. And he brought them from Jeddah to uh, Mecca. And he sat them around the Kaaba and said, these were righteous people in the beginning. Then guess what? After a while they said, oh, these are lords. Same thing with the ancient Egyptians. They have a lord for rain, and a lord for love, and a lord for death, and a lord for that. Initially they thought they were righteous people. We just invoked them to take them as a means of approach to Allah. This is the first step to slip down in the pen or the pit of shirk 
that you should only ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, Ad-du'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Ad-du'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Making du'a is the essence of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the course of talking about Ramadan and its virtues, that وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ I just don't understand that if you go to any physician and he prescribes any medication for you, say, this is the best because you trust the physician. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you want to know about me? I'm very near to you. If you need anything, don't ask no one. Don't ask no one, just ask me directly. You don't have to find any person as an intermediary between me and you. I am closer to you than your own juggler. So ask of me, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي In order to be rightly guided. Jazakul khair